I would first of all say that uh, ICT is everywhere, and definitely it has to come also be present in mm -hmm. education. Mm -hmm. And as far as we are building a knowledge-based uh, society, uh, we need to make sure that uh, trainees, I mean students, have required knowledge in, IC, in, in ICT. We need to make sure that uh, the total, uh, I can say, the teaching learning scenarios mm -hmm. are revolutionized to be led by ICT. Mm -hmm. When we talk of uh, smart classroom, we mean actually right. that uh, we do not only provide computers to schools, uh, but also we make sure that these computers are connected to internet, but also beyond the internet, uh, these computers uh, should be actually being used. So they are not actually gadgets to be stored. They are meant to be used to learn. They are meant to be used uh, as students teach uh, or as the student learn or mm -hmm. as the teachers teach. Right. So the concept in itself, a smart classroom entails that uh, when you go in our schools, so far we have reached about uh, 700 schools. So we normally have two two rooms, one is equipped with 50 computers, another 50 computers. So 100 in, total. 100 in yeah. total. Yeah. So in each room you'll find that uh, there is a projector, apart from the projector, the internet connectivity is there. So the, the difference it is bringing is that uh, it is not a computer lab, because a computer lab is meant where you go for computer literacy. Mm -hmm. So it is a room where by any teacher, whether you teach geography, mm -hmm. whether you teach physics, it is a room where you go and you deliver your lesson. Right, but the, 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 the target is to actually ensure by 2020, you're able to actually reach all the public schools in Rwanda. 2020 is just around the corner, but we all understand that not all schools, public schools in Rwanda have access to electricity. Not all of them even have the luxury of having an extra room to actually have these computers or these ICT gadgets stored right there. So how are you dealing with this immediate challenge right now? Thank you. Uh, in actual fact, that was the dream, that was the vision. We are still struggling to make sure that we achieve it. Uh, the issue of electricity is obvious, but you can hear from the Ministry of Infrastructure and even the local government, they're making the effort to make sure that uh, even in remote areas, mm -hmm. as they get access to schools, first of all, the priority is given to schools, hospitals, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we can see through the SDGs and other existing government effort mm -hmm. that uh, in the next two years, we shall be beyond 80%, mm -hmm. if not closer to 100%. Mm -hmm. So for the issue of uh, uh, scarcity of classrooms, uh, we still have a few areas where we do not have enough classrooms. But today you have an answer, like for the current budget, we are going to build a uh, number of uh, more rooms that, that, than we used to do in the past because we could secure 5.6 billion mm -hmm. 200 francs that are only dedicated for classrooms. Mm -hmm. So meaning that uh, this year and the forthcoming year, if we can even secure the same amount, we are going to have more classrooms available to host these computers. Right. You, so, talk, you, you yeah. speak of the budget. Sure. Uh, how much are we talking about uh, in funding this entire project as far as 2020 is concerned, reaching the target that you talk about? How much are we looking at? Uh, maybe it is important to know the unit cost. Mm -hmm. uh, a computer normally the dispositive that is delivered to school, uh, the cost range between 240 and 270 US dollar mm -hmm. per piece mm -hmm. of computer, so you can multiply. Mm -hmm. It's a huge investment. That's the reason why we say is that when these gadgets come to school, we have really to be utilized at maximum. Mm -hmm. Good. And how different will this project be from the one laptop per child project, which you know, had its own critics as much as we had people praising the project of actually giving each child in school a laptop. How different will this be like? Uh, the old PC was meant for primary mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. So these computers are given to P4, P5, and P6. Why the smart classroom is meant for secondary schools. Mm -hmm. That is why actually we are, we are targeting 150 secondary schools. So the smart classroom concept is targeting secondary schools. Right. And uh, it is as per the ICT education policy that was adopted by the year 2016. Mm -hmm. So in the end, how far do you want to go? What sort of results do you anticipate after this uh, particular initiative is actually achieved? The ultimate achievement or uh, dream that we want to, to, to achieve in the next future is to, is to see that the graduates are properly prepared to face uh, the, the labor market. So if the labor market has moved more digital, it is important that also learners have moved to digital. Second, there are more electronic learning resources available in the digital world mm -hmm. than in the physical libraries. Mm -hmm. So that actually, there are so many opportunities when you go digital than if you remain more paper-based. Mm -hmm. So the, in the end of the day, we are aiming to see the, our students well prepared having enough knowledge into what they have learned, but also being able to surf on internet. Mm -hmm. Teachers also being able to prepare 
adequately because the knowledge they have in textbooks is not enough. Mm -hmm. Even the student needs to be more exposed. So they can do some more research. Sure. Um, let's talk about the content of uh, this, uh, you know, uh, computer or smart uh, classrooms. Most of uh, the people have actually argued that our education system needs to be decolonized. Mm -hmm. We seem to still be learning what doesn't even fit our own context, our own cultural uh, values. How much of this is being considered as far as the content that is going to be fed in these ICT tools that these students will be using? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, in actual fact, the digital content that is being uploaded in these computers is contextualized mm -hmm. because it is aligned with the, the competence-based curriculum that was developed and approved by the Rwanda Education Board as the implementation agency of the Ministry of Education. So even the digital content which is being developed to be used in these computers is contextualized and aligned to our curriculum. Okay. It is not a matter of downloading A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. not fitting our context. No. The content which is there, of course, is aligned to our curriculum, but also we need to be open up, knowing that beyond our curriculum, our learners are the global citizens. So that's as actually the web comes actually to supplement the existing content that we develop based on our context. Mm. Yeah. So if we have investors watching us right now, what sort of opportunities are there in actually plugging into this initiative? Uh, I would say that the opportunities that are there, uh, first of all, in terms of software, we do still need uh, the type of software or uh, platforms that can link the students or can link the school, uh, can even help the students to learn even after normal classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, learning should not only occur when you are in a fixed environment. Mm -hmm. So if we could have like investors coming with technologies that enable students to learn after class, mm -hmm. teachers to know at what pace learners are learning, right. those students making improvement. So such kind of investment really needed. Thank you so much Thank for you. your